Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Another episode of Trash Talk. I'm Damian Hill. With me, as always, is TJ O'Connor. Tonight, we are joined by the one, the only, the current 155-pound amateur driller title holder, Davey Young. How are you doing tonight, Davey? Doing good, guys. How are you? Doing good. I really appreciate you for joining us, joining us over here at Trash Talk. Trash Talk is brought to you again by Valhalla Combat Sports Incorporated. Ink String Statue out in Brighton, Minnesota, Spartan Martial Arts, The Striking Institute, James Clark's Sports Psychology and Hypnosis Therapy, Origin Wellness CBD out in Minneapolis, Minnesota, The Fighters, and TJ's Mom. Now that we got the sponsors out of the way, our lovely, lovely sponsors, especially TJ's Mom, <laughs> we're, I, I guess uh, uh, the first question that I have for you is, the last time that we spoke after your after you won the title, you had mentioned that you were going pro. The next step for you was going pro and start making your claim and making your mark. Uh, I guess with this current situation, with the gyms being sh- shut down, not being able to necessarily get the best training, and not saying because I mean everybody's out there still trying to have everybody posting those videos, but. Not necessarily getting the best training you would normally seek before pro debut. What has things changed, or are you still as planning on going pro as soon as everything gets back into the swing of things? And how much time? I mean, how how soon did you see yourself making your pro debut before this quarantine happened? And then now, I guess, when do you see it happen? Well, um, I you know. Me and Coach Tom are talking maybe, you know, this September was going to be the pro debut or, or August. Um, but with all this going on, I mean, that's what, what have we done? Freaking month and a half almost with this quarantine stuff that yeah. we've been training for. And it's been so I think I think the most logical reason or logical thing to do would be probably take my first pro fight in like late November, December time frame. Um, just because, I mean, you need you need to train. You can't just go in there, especially as a pro. Like as an amateur, you can you can do that, but as a pro, it's a whole different ball game, whole different ball game, man. You just don't want to go in there and get yeah. snuffed out in the first has, forty-five seconds. Has it has it uh, crossed your mind or your coach's mind? Is that all that uh, maybe take one more amateur fight at all, or are you just like, nah, it's it's pro time, baby? <laughs> um. I mean, I don't know, Coach Tom and I haven't really talked about that, but I really just don't want to do the amateur fight. Um, I'm at the point where I have responsibilities to take care of, as in I have a child that I need to, you know, start working towards. Because you guys are talking to Cody in his last interview and about, like, the money, but family and everything, and that shit sucks as an amateur. You don't get paid anything, you know, so – it's time to start making some money, you know, actually, actual money. And, uh, yeah, I want to start fighting for money and elbowing people yeah. in the face. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's one of those things that's like it's uh, – there's – I feel like everybody needs to spend time as an amateur. But like you said, you're not getting paid. There's not too much reward, I mean, financially, but there's a whole bunch of – I mean, financial uh, burden <laughs> caused by the training and fighting and all that, you know. But I get like as a pro, it eases that burden a whole lot more. And I mean, you get to a chance to start to separate yourself and make a little bit more money than the guys in the rest of the pack. I guess uh, yeah, cause it's not only yeah, because it's not only just like because uh, amateurs, you know, you don't really get paid nothing. But pros, you can you can market yourself more. You're professional fighter you know you can market yourself more and make more money outside of fighting than you could as an amateur too that's one thing i look at it too just you know i go to somebody for a sponsorship i'm like oh i'm an amateur fighter I'm like oh well we don't care but i go to them and say oh I'm a, I'm a pro fighter you know they're gonna be like oh he's a professional athlete you know what i mean so like a lot of people when i went yeah. to sponsors, they would ask me they're like so is this like uh 
like, do you think I'm doing this the rest of your life? And it's like, they like, they didn't, they like questioned my, my intentions on fighting. Like I was fighting to fight. Like, no, I fight. I, I want to be the best in the world. So I think as yeah. a coming professional, it's a lot better to do. Yeah. I mean, and you speak about being the best in the world. I mean, you can't do that as an amateur. And if that's one of the goals that you have, I mean, easing the financial burden, taking care of the responsibility of uh, your child and yourself and family, and then going out and staking your claim is one of the best in the world. All can be done as, and has to be done as a pro. So, yeah. I mean, I, I totally respect the decision. And I mean, man, I, I, I can't wait to, to see your first fight. I, I guess I'm not asking you uh, if you are calling anybody out or uh, if, but uh do you have your eye set on a particular opponent or have you already had any offers from any promoters yet? Um, I mean, I've gotten a couple offers. Uh, I don't have my eye set really. Um, I'm kind of going into my pro as much, much different mindset as than I was in a, as an amateur. Uh, Cause now I got to start back at, at, at zero. You know what I mean? I'm not the champ anymore. I'm not none of that anymore. I'm just, you know, an O and O guy. Not that has to prove himself again. So now it's more of like an underdog mindset again, where I'm gonna be working my ass off like completely. So I just, hmm, I don't know who I'm, who I'm gonna fight first. Honestly, I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> sometimes you just gotta take what comes to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know I want to fight for LFA. Uh, that's probably who I'm going to fight for. Organization, I'll probably sign with LFA um, because it's I mean it's local. You get more ticket money, you get more stuff like that, you know. So family yeah, can come watch you. Oh, you. What's up? So, oh, do do you see yourself getting matched up with? Uh, I mean, let's say you're uh, you do have your uh, pro debut for LFA. Do you see yourself getting matched up with the guy from Minnesota or Wisconsin, or do you see somebody getting? Uh, I mean, them bringing somebody from further out of state, uh, further um, states. I, honestly, or... the way I've seen it, the way I've seen it, I've seen like it's like basically you gotta fight people like in state. Like I feel like I have to fight someone from Minnesota, you know, a uh, uh, good fifty five from Minnesota, you know, beat him. Uh, then we can go, you know, a couple states over, and then start a branching in the country, and then eventually go to like finds a guy out of Brazil or like different world, or like, you know, you know, somewhere in the world or something, but. Um, I think I, the way I've seen it usually is it goes to LFA. Usually you fight like a local Minnesota guy also first, for like your first fight. I've never really seen yeah. an out branch of a different uh, opponent from a different state on your first fight. Yeah, you, yeah. you mentioned you might get matched up with a local guy, but the thing about it and taking that LFA path, you know, you like you said, you're going to get the toughest guys, the toughest local guys, right. and then it's going to go quick. Is that something that you, you have your sight set on? It's just, you know, take taking it right away, or do you, I mean, not say tuna fights, because that's not a phrase used in MMA, but do you want to get one or two under your belt before taking the jump in competition right away? I want to... Obviously, it's a smart thing to do. I want to feel out a pro fight. I want to have a pro fight, my, my debut, to feel out how a pro fight is. You know, obviously, I don't want to fish in there because that's just going to look ridiculous. So, and I, and I also don't want like a freaking eleven and zero guy, my first fucking pro fight. You know, uh, but uh, I want someone who's experienced to give me that. Okay, this is a way different level than an amateur fight. You know what I mean? Then take me to the waters, or I just completely just dom or dominate, or take me to waters. You know what I mean? So, I would really love to uh, get somebody who's who's experienced and 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 uh, push me to that limit and show me what a pro is. I I like that because I mean, not wanting to fight a turd and not wanting to go out there and just fight just a undefeated eleven and zero killer. You know, but wanting to go out there and fight somebody who's tough, who's going to be a challenge for you, not an easy fight. I mean, that's I mean, that's the way it should be. And I feel like that's the proper way to go about it when you're trying to build yourself, too. Because, I mean, let's say you get up to 4-0 beating the fish as you put it. I mean, what? then you all, all of a sudden you fight another 
for an old guy who actually was doing what you were are planning on doing and fighting the guys that are going to test yourselves. And I mean, TJ and I have seen those matchups play out a yeah. lot of, I mean, a lot, and it's never really worked out for the guy who's only fought fish. So, I mean, yeah, no, so a, I, a padded I, record I, does I do nothing respect. good for nobody. No, except for whoever their manager is probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know a couple managers like that that like to <laughs> open up their guys' as records. Yeah. Oh, man. They're all out there. But, okay, so getting more uh, back on track with you, what yeah. what have you been doing uh, to stay in shape and, uh, I guess, uh, keep your mind focused on the the right things while you, I guess, have so much free time right now? I don't know uh, – what your current work situation is right now, but uh, I mean, with the time, I mean, everything's closed. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, so been doing a lot of running. Um, been doing a lot, a lot, a lot of running. Uh, I mean, it's kind of hard when you know, I don't have my own like personal like uh, heavy bag or anything, and uh, do all that. So, do a lot of shadow boxing. A lot of shadow wrestling in my backyard. I have a pretty big backyard. So do a lot of sprints in there. Um, ah man, it's been it's been tough. It's been tough. I honestly I I uh I want to get back. I've been itching so bad. And then it, they just extended it two more weeks, guys. Two more weeks. Yeah. Yep. And I think what's crazy okay. about this I got and another- talking to you and how antsy you're getting. I mean, everybody in Minnesota knows you are literally one of the last two people to be in a sanctioned fight in the state of Minnesota. Uh, and as far as MMA is concerned, you barely got in this fight on March 7 before all the shows started getting shut down. Um, how happy were you that as hyped as this fight was, you guys were able to get it off? And then the war it was, I obviously don't have to get into the fight, but how happy were you in retrospect you, that you guys were able to get that fight in? Uh, I was super happy. I mean, uh... I, I was getting kind of nervous too, and that whole like coronavirus stuff was starting. I was just like, "Oh God, they're gonna like start shutting everything down and doing all this." So, I'm glad they got in there quickly because I think the next week they shut everything down, didn't they? Yeah, the next week they shut everything yeah. down. They got a couple shows in that were limited capacity before everything was shut shut down. Yeah, that's insane, yeah. man. That's insane. Okay. So with their- with with everything being shut down too, though, or sorry, I don't think you answered uh, TJ's question. My bad. Uh, no, I, th- I think he did. I don't know if he did or not. I oh, yeah, he okay. said he was well, I, 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 it, like, Oh, okay, because it uh it cut out for me a little bit. I I wasn't. It, I'm on a lag right now. I'm sorry, you guys. But okay. uh, <laughs> my question is, <laughs> is uh when this quarantine is over and you are making your pro debut do you plan on having it at 55 or because of all the off time do you see yourself taking a fight at 170 possibly oh no 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 i <laughs> hell no. i will never fight at 170 but uh no i mean right now i weigh like 172 i only weigh like 172 okay. So I'm not like in fucking eating all this junk food and stuff. I mean, I just got I just ate right now a sausage and grilled bell peppers. So I mean, I'm I'm still eating healthy and taking care of my body. And as soon as this is done, I'm going you know right back into the swings of things. So and uh, okay, well, I was oh sorry. Oh no 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 sorry. Go ahead. No, I was talking to another uh, 55er who, who's uh, gonna re- remain nameless, but he's <laughs> saying that he. Pushing 188, 190 right now, and that's what, I, that's what I normally push. That's what I normally yeah. push. But. but hey, you're staying disciplined. The pro mindset. Hell Man. yeah. Yeah. With, with that being said, obviously your last fight was at 55. Staying so low during this time frame, jumping right back into the scheme of things. Are you looking at making the pro debut at 55, or potentially even going back to 45 again? Oh no, I'll, I'll I'll be staying at fifty five. I mean, I felt I felt amazing at weigh ins. Uh, I mean, I was such an easy weight cut, easy as hell. I mean, I I walked in there. Uh, what was I under? I was like one fifty four flat, so no problems, no worries, nothing like that. So I mean, I love fifty five. I felt great. I mean, that was a five round fight, and I 
but still, you know, still pushing through it all five rounds. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I love the way. Well, and it's good. What's up? Oh, I'll say it was good to see that you got that in too. The yeah. I mean, going the distance yeah. in a title fight before going pro. I, mean, I know that's kind of my plans, man. I mean, I, that was the plan was to when I first started fighting at Spartan was to uh, you know win a title, then go pro. Um, Coach Todd would love to see him do more jiu-jitsu tournaments though, because he wants to uh, he wants me to start killing people. He wants to start folding people. But uh, yeah, I mean. I, I I just I don't know. I, I, I've explained to you guys before. I just amateurs, it's just it's all like corrupt, dumb stuff. Like the Kansas City like I've had a lot of dumb shit happen as an amateur already. And it's like a lot of this stuff would be ne- like would not happen as a pro. So I think it's a more of like a, a, a another jump, not only just from, you know, an amateur to pro like fighting experience, but like business wise. Like I mean some of the promotions I did as an amateur, especially Kansas City, was <laughs> insane, dude. Like, we didn't have yeah. gloves until an hour before the fight started. They, <laughs> like, oh, fuck. yeah. It was yeah. insane. The stuff that had to. Oh, my God. Didn't you, uh, some guy need to borrow your cup, too, because he didn't have one or something like that? Like, or? Borrowed, like, jokes oh, my or God. Something. something weird, dude. It was yeah. Just- yeah, like there was no nobody had. I mean, they whatever. We don't gotta talk shit about that promotion. That whatever. But I'm just glad that you're that you like what you said. You're probably not gonna have to face things like that again. You know, uh, there's some there's some things that sucks uh, that you're probably gonna see as a pro. Only time will tell. But hopefully, there's. Little to no bad experiences. Um, oh, I'm just starting to think a bunch about a bunch of bullshit that has happened to <laughs> fighters that I know right now. But anyway, let's keep this on a, on a positive note. So, I guess, crap. I ran out of questions. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I got like to keep it on a positive note. You know, uh, professional mindset, looking at making the changes. You said this, this is a lifestyle change for you. So, obviously, only greener pastures looking forward. Um, so, uh, once the gym gets opened back up, I know things are rolling back into it. Uh, I, I'm excited to see the, the pro career of the Apex Predator. I mean, we followed you as your amateur career and obviously reach out to us before the pro announcements made. We love breaking news here at Trash Talk. And uh, before we do wrap it up here today, though, just always want to give an open platform, thank any teammates, sponsors, family members, anything like that. Uh, the time is yours, sir. Awesome. So first off, you know, always got to show respect to Coach Tom. Uh, would not even be here. Wouldn't have that belt without him. So um, I want to thank him. Thank everybody at Spartan again. Um, Thank all my sponsors, you guys. You know, we wouldn't have a bigger platform without you guys, too. You guys doing some off shit. So, applaud you guys. But, uh, I appreciate it. We're not yeah, doing sure. without the fighters. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Just my whole family, coaches, teammates, um, friends. Shout out to my son. Getting huge. He's talking. Saying no to everything I tell him to do. Big old nose everywhere. Um, shout out to this little dude. My favorite guy in the world. Named Sir so Reginald, but I call him Reggie. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Reggie. Uh, the gold gloves. The gold gloves. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Kitten mittens. No, but okay. <laughs> oh, man. I'm a cat guy now. It's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> so now nah, i'm gonna say it i was gonna say uh you know what i'm gonna save it for after we're done this has been another episode of trash talk with damien and tj hit that like button subscribe to trash talk with damien and tj don't be a hoe mm.